Political infighting while Lebanon's economy spirals out of control. Food and fuel are in short supply and the currency in free fall. So what will it take to prevent total collapse? I'm Andrea Sankey and today's newsmaker is the crisis in Lebanon. One of the worst financial crises in 150 years. That is how the World Bank describes the current state of Lebanon. Since 2019, the Lebanese pound has lost 90% of its value. More than half the population lives below the poverty line and the government can barely keep the lights on. Quite simply, it is a nation on the brink and its people are running out of patience. This week, the government raised the price of fuel in an attempt to stem crippling shortages, but all it seems to have done is anger an already furious population struggling to survive. It is a bleak picture for Lebanon, and joining me now to discuss what or whom might be to blame is from Tripoli. Mustafa Alouche, he is the vice president of the Future Movement, a political party led by Saad Hariri. From Beirut, Ahmed Alisi, secretary of political relations for the opposition party Citizens in a State. And Jad Grossen joins us from Junia. He is a journalist specializing in Lebanese politics and the economy. Thanks all so much for being with us. Jad, I'll start with you. I mean, a lot has happened in Lebanon over the past 18 months. But, you know, before the explosion and before the pandemic, you know, added immeasurably, let's say that, to the crisis, the October Revolution was calling for an end to corruption and a completely new government. Lebanon still wants that. Uh, but now, just like in 2019, you still aren't seeing any alternatives. It feels like Lebanon has just been permanently sentenced to political failure. Yes, the people in the streets and were asking for the resignation of the government. That happened, but after a year and a half, we have uh, now the designate prime minister back, Saad al-Hariri, who was the prime minister when the demonstrations occurred. The president of the republic is still the same, Michel Aoun was then and is now, and definitely the speaker of the parliament is now for 30 years the speaker of parliament, and the same political parties are going to be uh, represented in the next government, if it is formed, uh, let's wait and see. But the economic situation and the social situation is definitely worse. And today, just today, we had a fight with knives in Aisha Bakhtar in Beirut. We had, we have a bank job, a robbery in a bank in Beirut. We have a fight in a petrol station. We have, we have a shortage in fuel in Lebanon, and we have some bullets were fired in Tripoli. So this is just today uh, right. during the. Uh, like five hours ago. Right. I mean, we're, we're seeing constant pictures of just destruction in Lebanon constantly. But again, I'm wondering 
as always, what is the political alternative? You complain, and understandably so, about the corrupt politicians that have been there and uh, seem to indefinitely be there. What could actually change the political dynamics in your country? Who are the people that could fill this void? Uh, my personal belief is that our problem dates back to 30 wow. years ago, so it's a systemic problem. We need a change in the political system for uh, a center of decision-making to, uh, to, uh, to have. We don't have a center of decision-making. Each government we have is a national unity government which, which is dysfunctional and cannot take any decision, especially concerning the economic problem, which wow. this crisis uh, has been ongoing for more than a year and a half, and not a single decision has been taken since then, and we have the worst kind of distribution of losses occurring in this country for this fact, specifically. That's why uh, regime change is needed. Until now, we don't have the political power, the political alternative to make this change work. Hopefully, during the uh, month ahead, something can happen. Okay. In the, in the of, uh, for, for, like power sharing can change in this country hopefully before the elections, because now the elections are in jeopardy. We are not sure if the elections will take place next year, because in our past experiences in Lebanon, the elections were delayed several times. Right. And if these elections are handled by this political class, one cannot be sure of its uh, uh, results. Okay. Mustafa Alush, you are very much part of the infrastructure that Jad says is mostly to blame for the collapse the, on the brink of collapse, at best, uh, of Lebanon right now. Do you accept responsibility? Well, uh, to, to start with, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm fortunate or unfortunate not to be able to hear what uh, my friends and colleagues are uh, saying. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the reception of the okay. voice is very poor. They basically uh, blame I'm, you I'm, for, well, for most of Lebanon's uh, problems today so as being part of the corrupt old guard of politics that hasn't changed in decades. Okay, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to blame anyone uh, in this situation. And definitely it didn't happen b only because we, uh, the politicians are corrupt, but definitely uh, for uh, when things were going right or between brackets going right, none of these voices have been heard. They were just uh, hiding uh, behind uh, all politicians and behind sometimes behind uh, uh, th this or that from the politicians or just being neutral and uh, not saying anything. Definitely the situation is not only because of the political uh, uh, leadership, uh, if I can call it leadership. This uh, leadership has failed, definitely, and uh, the failure is not only because of uh, the quality of this leadership, definitely the quality of the system in Lebanon is uh, terrible. And uh, our population acts, it's the whole set of population, they, uh, they, uh, the, it's them who elected these uh, leaders. And it's not, uh, it's not coming from Mars or from anywhere else. And if you want to change the system, we have to start from there, to elect a new, uh, 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 a new elite in order to lead uh, the country. So uh, it's very easy for those who have never experienced really how things are and are staying behind desks and uh, just confabulating about things uh, to blame uh, me or anyone else for this issue. But those who are really working uh, among people and uh, knowing the real situation, okay. they have another thing to, to say. Anyway, if we have failed, Let's go for election. Let's go for elections and see how things can be changed by those who will win. Okay, uh, Ajad, I'll come back to you in a second for a response. But Ahmed, I also uh, need to ask you. I mean, you also believe no real change can come uh, with the current people in power, but you're also partly in power, and again, no one seems to be offering up a better alternative. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to comment on what uh, Mr. Alush said. 
Uh, honestly, it's not a sudden collapse that we're seeing. This collapse has been seen since 1997, uh, when uh, the decision was made to start uh, borrowing dollars from uh, outside Lebanon. Mm. Uh, this decision was fought uh, by a lot of people, including some banks, including people working in banks, because uh, it is easy to know that uh, such decisions will lead to what we see now. Uh, this system that Mr. Alush called the failed system or failing system, uh, which he also uh, aligned with the citizens and uh, how they elected their uh, political leaders, was mainly, its role model was Rafiq Hariri, uh, who's okay. the leader of the future movement in which, who was the leader of the future movement in which Mr. Marlouche uh, is currently the VP. So uh, he's definitely, uh, this movement, people inside it hold responsibility for what's happening because it wasn't a, a sudden collapse. It's a series of decisions that led to us to where we are now. Okay, Jean, quickly go uh, ahead. Now, uh, you said we are in power. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, uh, Ahmed, I'll let you finish that. Yes, yeah, I mean, you are the opposition. Uh, what's your alternative? Yeah. Our alternative is not to play within this game. It's not to say that we can run this current system in a better way. We're saying we want to change the entire game. Uh, if we want to run this period, this period of collapse, and come out with a viable society, uh, we need a transitional government with exceptional powers that could uh, put legislation and decrees uh, that can handle this period and distribute okay. the losses in a manner that can sustain uh, the main part of our society in order to re-establish something as the crisis ends. Okay. Jad, quickly, I saw you wanting to respond to what you heard Mustafa saying. Uh, go ahead, and then I'd like to move on to another issue. Go ahead. Yeah, first of all, I, I don't want to uh, single out uh, Mr. Alouche or his political party. I said it's a systemic problem. Part of it is Mr. Alouche's party, not all of it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, for me personally, I don't, uh, uh, I'm for sure not to blame, even if I sit behind desk, I'm a journalist, and I'm not responsible to be blamed. So uh, it cannot go vice versa in this specific case. As for saying that the problem is within the system, political system that we live in, that's a great conclusion that we can reach. But when we reach this conclusion, someone has to work on changing the system in actual political steps. And we are not seeing this from any political party in government or being represented in the next government uh, trying to be formed by Mr. Hariri. As okay. for the election, the election, yes, Many people can resort to election, but do we have the electoral law? Do we have the political uh, system that will uh, make this election happen? Uh, a credible authority that will run this election? I'm not sure about that, because if we say, let's have an election and just uh, a point to end our sentence, this is the same sentence that Bashar al-Assad will say, or Hussein Barak, or whomever. Elections are a necessity, but under the right condition. Okay. Uh, Jad, I'm, I'm going to stay with you for a minute. Apologies to my other guests, but Jad, you are the only one that actually is not representing any political party. So I want to start with you on this, because when looking particularly at the economic crisis in Lebanon, we have to look uh, at the central bank governor, Riyad Salame. And I actually have to cite um, the Financial Times here, quoting an unnamed U.S. official uh, who says, we don't know whether Salome is the safety pin or the grenade on the table. That's frightening. Has he maintained, really, a fragile stability in the economy or actually illegally protected the savings and, and assets of the wealthy Lebanese at the expense of the rest of the population? When you have a Ponzi scheme, you can never know if the, uh, uh, the blame is on a specific uh, uh, representative or official in the government or it's a more uh, larger uh, scheme. Because, yes, Riyad Salem is in the middle of the scheme that we had for the last 30 years, definitely. But he is an, an official in the Lebanese administration. He should be uh, uh, under the authority of a government. Someone has to uh, 
try and put him in a position of responsibility of blame. Okay. No one did it because the government, the central bank, and the banks in Lebanon are in cahoots in the same Ponzi scheme for about now, let's say, at least 23 years. In the last year and a half, when the crisis began, instead of trying to cut down the losses, the political class and Mr. Salami and the Association of Banks of Lebanon doubled down. And this is the problem that we are living in now. The political class and the officials like Mr. Salami are doubling down and not trying to distribute the losses and cut the losses in order to transition into uh, uh, intermediate transitional phase where we can try and begin our path towards recovery. In spite okay. of that, we do okay. another, we go an another path and we double down on the citizens and try to, s the, our money, which are in the banks, are still uh, being okay. trapped in the banks and we cannot reach our money and we are not in a any uh, financial or economic plan towards recovery. Okay. Mustafa Alush, your thoughts on the central bank governor's role here? Well, uh, again, uh, I need to say that uh, I would have liked to understand or to listen or hear what uh, the, my uh, 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 friends are saying. I didn't hear anything, unfortunately, uh, but definitely uh, uh, I heard something called a, transition, a transitional government, which is uh, definitely outside the system. Then uh, who, who, who will be the, 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 one, the reference for this issue? Is it the same parliament which is present till now and who will re uh, refuse this? Or an international intervention from the international community to force uh, a new solution on Lebanon? One, what they are, one, what I heard, or at least part of what I heard, is just that uh, we need something uh, from outside the system. Definitely, the system has failed, and it's not able to uh, redeem itself. Uh, however, if we are calling for an international intervention in order to change the whole thing, what about the issue of Hezbollah? What will happen with it? Uh, do, do I have uh, any answer concerning this? The only way to, uh, the, definitely the, the situation now is crumbling. Uh, there is no way that we can stop the uh, dismantling and uh, disintegration of the country for the time being, unless a major, major, uh, uh, very intense and very violent probably intervention uh, will happen. Uh, but uh, at the same time, if we're, bl uh, if we're blaming only future movement for what's happening is an issue, then we have to discuss it apart. And if we are blaming the whole system, then we have to talk about everything in the system, including those who have uh, invented wars, who are, those who have went to Syria, those who, uh, who have covered for this, uh, uh, okay. uh, 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 this misfortunes that we have uh, faced for in economy and in uh, our security. Okay. So again, uh, uh, till now, I'm only listening and hearing theoretical solutions, theoretical propositions, but uh, on the ground, I don't see anything uh, which is useful, at least for the time being. Okay. Ahmed, I'll, I'll turn to you. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, Mustafa could not hear uh, the comments made about the central bank governor, his potential role in the economic collapse. Um, but let, let's move on then, because he was very firm about saying what is now needed is some kind of international intervention. I mean, are you on the same page there that perhaps an object objective, arguably objective third party, um, whether it's the UN Security Council or another foreign government could, is the only real solution to, uh, to sorting out this crisis in Lebanon? No, honestly, not at all. Uh, so I don't know if uh, what I said uh, hinted to that, but uh, it's not what I meant at all. Uh, what we're saying is that this transitional government is supposed to take its uh, power from the current parliament. Shifley but how to do so uh, is the work. Uh, we're calling on all opposition forces, uh, the real ones, the, the ones that want to end the, the current system and establish a new one, to work together to show that they are politically aligned, to force 
the political powers currently in the parliament to recede some of the uh, legislative powers to a transitional government that can run this system during this crisis. Uh, this uh, transitional government would definitely need uh, relations with the outside world. This is not uh, an island, but uh, we are not calling on international intervention in, the, in Lebanon at all. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. That's it. We're down to our last few minutes, and I'm, I, I want to kind of bring it back to the broader picture. And I mean, what is really so frightening is that uh, you think it can't get worse. Uh, you know, back in 2019, the October Revolution called to basically take down the federal government. Corruption was out of control. The uh, economy was collapsing. The healthcare system was falling apart even before the pandemic. And then it gets unimaginably worse, not least the catastrophe of the explosion. It wiped out a huge part of the capital and its port. I need to know, I mean, how much further down can this spiral go? Jad, I'll direct this to you, uh, before Lebanon can start either building itself up again or see even worse to come. Unfortunately, uh, I'm very sad to say this, we are still at the beginning of a long path uh, towards the, hopefully, uh, unfortunately, the worst future, if nothing uh, is happening. And I can allude to what happened in Lebanon during the 80s. We had also a financial problem. We had also a devaluation of the Lebanese pound. Uh, but then we had a government, several governments, that tried to handle this issue. And back then, we didn't have an insolvency in the banking sector also. So our problems today are even worse. But back then, uh, the lira to the dollar was a dollar was about four liras in 82. And after six years, the dollar was about 450 liras. So the devaluation went times 120. Uh, now we're just, uh, our devaluation just uh, hit times 10. The, uh, the lira's uh, value is worse 10 times, which is very bad, which is catastrophic. Mm. But we saw something worse during the past, and our conditions today are even harder. We don't have a government. We don't have a recovery plan. We don't have a financial plan. We don't have even uh, any political authority, even outside the government, with any plan, but the opposition parties. And I saw Mr. Alouche talking. I heard Mr. Alouche talking about theoretical solutions. Yes, these are theoretical solutions when one talks about the need to have a new government, when one uh, talks about the need to change the system, Okay. But uh, I believe any opposition force that is calling for systemic change, this specific uh, s solution, let's say, will be theoretical. The only ones who can have practical solutions are the ones in power. And one of the parties in power is the future movement. The other, yes, okay. is Hezbollah. And yes, Hezbollah is also to blame. But they are forming the government together, the future movement and Hezbollah, yeah. they are trying to form a government together. Yeah, Ahmed, that's the problem. Okay, Ahmed, very, very quickly. I, I mean, I hope you are more hopeful uh, than your colleague here, but um, do you think Lebanon can be prevented from becoming essentially a failed state? Uh, yeah, even though we're on our way to being a failed state, if not, uh, if we're not there yet, but uh, if the right people hold the responsibility, yes, we are able to uh, to build something new. Uh, there is hope with this unfortunate events now that we're seeing for the past two years. Uh, even though uh, very very harsh on our society, they do open doors for change. Uh, change comes with difficulty, uh, and uh, the difficulties we're seeing must be rewarded uh, with a new system, with a civil state that can okay. handle the society, that can handle its citizens and groups that live within this geographical area that we call Lebanon. Okay. Uh, because it's time for us to see what our real state is and uh, it's time for this region to see what our real state is. Let's hope. Okay, Ahmed, thank you so much. We'll have to give you the last word and thank you to all three of my panelists, really, so much for joining us on this edition of the Newsmakers. And to our viewers, of course, for tuning in as well. I'm Andrea Sankey. We'll see you next time.